All right, we're back at Advent of Code Day 9. Let's see Disc Fragmenter. What's an amphipod? <laughs> okay, the disc map is our puzzle input. This is our puzzle input. Copy. Dense format. Files from free space. One, two, three, four, five is a one block file. Two blocks of free space. A three block file. Four blocks of free space. And a five block file. So it's just alternating. Okay, so it's file space, file space, file. So... Each file on disk also has an ID number based on the order of files as they appear before they are rearranged, starting with ID zero. So one, two, three, four, five has three files. That's one, three, and five. And the IDs start at index zero. So we've got disk map and we've got blocks. We were given a disk map, right? Yeah, okay, we got a disk map. The first example, two block, three space, three block, three space, one block, three space. Th yeah, okay, I think we're good with that. Uh, move file blocks one at a time from the end to the leftmost free space until there are no gaps. So hopefully these all actually fill in. Wait. Okay, so we've got five blocks and each block is moved in one by one in reverse order. So we've got our whole test case set up here. We're doing file compacting. So we have to calculate a checksum at the end. Add up the result of multiplying each of these blocks position with the file ID it contains. So file ID zero in slot zero is zero. File ID or spot one file ID zero is zero. Okay, hopefully we only have nine IDs then. That's not true. So this only shows nine files, right? But we actually have a whole lot more than that. So we have to keep the IDs somewhere. What do we actually need from the IDs? Just the number. So maybe we don't even need to move anything. Maybe we can just do this calculation with a reverse iterator. I feel like I'm not yet sure how I want to parse this or if we need to really at all. We do need to have the numbers at the end. So we kind of need to like enumerate the number of files somehow. We could probably just calculate the number of files by doing a little bit of math. Just create day nine, part one. We get our input here. And what was the output supposed to be? 1928. So let's check this input. And that is the right answer. Wonderful. Um, and we'll take a look at part two in a second. I want to go over part one because I think we used a couple of new things today. And I probably need to go back here and see if I can clean this up. Um, I, this was kind of like uh, in progress in my head working through it. So I could probably write this in a cleaner way. We have this, right? And we need to take each of these numbers roughly speaking, expand them. Everything here is a digit. So every time you say number, it refers to either a file ID, a position, or something like that. It's unfortunate that the IDs here are also numbers because it makes the explanation a little confusing. But basically this here expands out. So the first thing takes up two spaces, the next thing takes up three. In, in our case, it flips back and forth. So even integers or even indices uh, expand into files and odd indices expand into empty space. So two for a file block, three for an empty space, two, uh, three for a file block, three for an empty space, and so on. That of course ends up with this in theory, but I would really like to not expand this whole thing in memory. So we could have just expanded this out like that, taken the index, done a dot repeat, left some space with some special character in it, and then started trying to do like two pointers in from the end, swap in the back to the front, and then do the same check that we did for when to end or a similar check. But what I tried to do instead is figure out how many items there are here, right? How many in the uncompressed input. And we do that by iterating over everything once. So this is one iteration, map all the characters to digits. Um, we could actually probably do this once and then reuse this repeatedly because we're actually doing some extra work here. Once we have the index of the uncompressed data, like the maximum number of characters in the uncompressed data, we then take a range from zero to that number and reverse it and zip it with the cars and reverse that. So here we have input dot characters dot reverse and uh, the range of the enumeration reversed. Now you could be saying, Chris, why didn't you do input dot, you know, cars dot enumerate dot reverse. And to that, I would say, Exact size iterator is not implemented for characters. So unfortunately, this line specifically doesn't work. So to get around the fact that reverse doesn't work on input.cars.enumerate, we can instead 
do a range from zero to the ending index, reverse that and zip it with the characters reversed. Now you could get around that by going input as bytes, later enumerate reverse, because actually all of this input is ASCII uh, and not really cars. But I decided to keep it with string slices, even though that will be technically less performant in this case. And for advent of code, you could use a byte slice instead. So basically with those reversed iterators, right, counting down from the uncompressed high index and counting or going down from the regular compressed input, we start with the high index, we use scan to keep track of this index. Scan actually lets us produce a number of items. So this function here is producing new iterator items. That's why we can flatten and then just hit next later on. We get the number of indices, we subtract that from the high index. So we have the low value now. We use the low value with a range. We use the low value with a range back to the high value and reverse it and filter map that out. We filter map because for the empties, this will just go to nothing. And for the ones that we want to propagate, this will be the index and the file ID. This is the uncompressed index. So when we flatten that, what we end up with is an iterator that iterates in reverse that has the uncompressed index ID for the given character that we're processing or the given file ID that we're processing, sorry. That leaves us with the ability to iterate from the front with enumerate like we wanted to earlier. We do the same thing. We get the number of indices that we need to process from that character digit. We loop over the range from our zero index or whatever index we happen to be at currently to the number of indices that we need to travel. If the last uncompressed index that we pulled off the other iterator is a position which we have just gotten to or passed, then we break out of this loop. And otherwise, we add to the sum with the uncompressed index that we've calculated times the file ID, if we have a file in that location already. If we had an empty, then we grab from that reverse to just pull off the next file ID and do the same process, but also set that next uncompressed reversed index so that we know when we're passing each of these indices. And then we update the base index so that we jump forward and then we do it again. And that sums up into the final value. And if we bench that, it's 150 microseconds. So probably some optimization to do here. I think especially some of this scan logic can probably be changed up. I think this for loop doesn't really need to be changed up. We could probably operate on bytes. We could do this two digit for the entire iterator uh, once instead of doing it three different times, I think. Yeah, one, two, three. So some optimizations to make here can definitely clean this code up a little bit. Let's check part two. Upon completion, two things immediately become clear. First, the disk definition has a lot more contiguous free space, just like the Amphipod hoped. Second, the computer is running much more slowly. Maybe introducing all that file system fragmentation was a bad idea. He'd like to try compacting the files on disk by moving the whole files instead. Uh, this time attempt to move whole files to the leftmost span of free space blocks that could fit the file. Attempt to move each file exactly once in order of decreasing file ID number, starting with the file with the highest file ID number. If there is no span of free space to the left of a file that is large enough to fit the file, the file does not move. So we kind of need to know all of the free space that we have available and then take the entire chunks and move them in. And each one only has to try to move once. So if it can find a spot to the left, then it moves. If not, then it doesn't. So this to me sounds like we need to find all of the space and their starting indices, the starting uncompressed indices. We also need to check some that file. So I think we could do a scan through to find all the empty space. I'm curious to know if anything moves into the empty space of something else. No, it doesn't because that would be impossible. So like if nine moved and then for some reason two was to the right of nine, but that will never happen because we always go from back to front. So we end up with, I don't know, to make it easy, probably a hash map of uncompressed index to amount of space. And we can modify that as we go. Feels awkward, feels finicky. I can't think of a really good solution for this. Just feels like keeping a lot of indices around. Like this problem is effectively made to expand out, hold it all in memory, do the moving of everything, and then check some, which is kind of frustrating. Maybe today was the wrong day to try to start with an optimized solution. 
So if we have all the empty space and the indices at which they start, then we can iterate with our iterator. That gives us the reverse. We'll slightly modify that to give us the whole chunk instead of anything else. Each of the file IDs needs to have a starting index. So we can have a starting index and a length that needs to be compared against all of the empty space to the left of it. So we could iter on that hash map and find the minimum value. I guess these will always be ordered so we could just use a vec. We don't need a hash map. That would keep everything in order anyway. I'm curious about one thing. I'm curious about what the high index of the actual input is. It's only 90,000 characters. That feels really disappointing. So I guess we can start by copying this in. What is the answer we're supposed to have? 2858. Okay, hi, I am back. I don't know how much of the video I'm actually going to include in the video that ships tomorrow, uh, but effectively I took a very long time to do part one and part two. And what ended up happening for me is my test case was passing for part two, but my real input was not. My answer was too high. And the issue, depending on how much of the video you've watched at this point, is that I was not checking to make sure that the index of the chunks that I was moving uh, wasn't getting passed. So in effect, when I was looking through the possible empties and I was trying to find an empty space to put a chunk in, I wasn't also checking that the empty was to the left of the index of the chunk. So I added this line of code and my number dropped quite a bit and that turned out to be the right answer. So my code is pretty convoluted today. I spent a lot of time thinking through it as I was writing it. I might even cut out a lot of the part two code writing. I don't know, we'll find out. You'll know because you're watching the video. <laughs> so part two's uh, problem here for day nine is that we have this input here, right? Which is file space, file space, file space. It expands out into this big thing. I really wanted to try to do this without expanding it all out in memory. So that's what I started trying to do. And I succeeded to some degree. So the algorithm for part nine is basically we have all of these chunks and all of these spaces. We need to take the nine nine here and move it into the first available empty space and then try to move eight eight which or eight 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 which can't and then try to move seven 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 which can try to move these two which can't try to move four four which can try to move three try to move two which can and so on and so forth so we had some code from part one i grabbed the high index of the uncompressed data uh, just by processing all of the numbers so i took the input iterated over in cars. I think today was in particular a day that would have benefited from doing this in bytes and not cars. One of the things in Advent of Code is that everything tends to be ASCII, so bytes works. Uh, Russ cars representation is not ASCII characters. So there comes a little bit more restriction in what you can do with them, uh, just to point that out. So we map over that and we get the U sizes and we sum them up and that gives us the total number of spaces that we are going to have. Now this is one iteration and a sum, but each of these numbers are summing in uh, one by one. So we haven't really expanded anything, etc. Now we did something here, <laughs> um, input.cars.rev, or rather input.cars.enumerate.rev uh, didn't work like this. Um, and this is due to, I believe, trait bounds. I think enumerate needs exact size iterator and double-ended iterator. Um, and or rather rev needs exact size and double ended and enumerate only does that if the underlying type implements both of them. Uh, so the chain doesn't quite make it to rev here. And I think the underlying issue is that cars are Unicode segments or Unicode code points and not ASCII characters. So this would work if this was like input as bytes, but it doesn't work for characters. And that's one of the things I was kind of referring to before. So instead of that, uh, I got the input length and reversed it as a range and zipped that with the characters reversed. Uh, and this is effectively the same thing. So we end up with this like input.cars.enumerate.reverse situation uh, in which we need to keep track of this index as we kind of chunk down through these characters. So we use scan to do that. Scan will produce a new iterator for us. So what we're doing here is we're keeping around some state and we've got some function which will generate a number of items for us. In this case, we're generating chunks uh, and we're returning the value sum chunk here whenever we have a chunk that we wanna process uh, and the value none 
whenever we don't. So this iterator technically never ends really, or rather we aren't really ending it explicitly uh, because we never return none for this outer option. This inner option sum allows us to do dot flatten here and get rid of them. So we filter out all of these nuns when we do this flatten, and then we're only left with these chunks, which is why if we look at the type, we get impl iterator item chunk. So we get the number of indices that the given file ID is going to take up. We subtract that number of indices from the base index, and then we put a chunk in our iterator that has that base index, the number of spaces it takes up, and the file ID. Now, when we enumerate, we get like zero, one, two, et cetera for everything, and only the even numbers are files, which means that only for the even numbers do we increment the file ID. So this is our enumerate number over two uh, to get that file ID. So this gives us a reverse iterator over all file chunks. The next thing we do is we calculate all of the empties. We do that by doing input cars enumerate and then folding in all of those empties. Here we start with the uncompressed index zero and no empties. And this is our callback to put things into that. So again, we do basically the same logic. We get the number of indices. If we're on a file, or rather, if we're not on a file, right? If it's not equal to zero, uh, then we push in an empty. This is, takes the uncompressed index, so the expanded index, and the number of spaces it takes up from that index, increments the uncompressed index in our fold by that number, and then returns the uncompressed index along with the empties that we've calculated. All of that to say we end up with a vec of uncompressed index starting positions. All of that to say we end up with a vec of uncompressed index starting positions and the number of indices they take up. So the amount of space an empty has basically. So now we've got a reverse iterator of all of the file IDs and the space they take up and an iterator of, or rather a vec of all of the empties and the space they take up. We keep track of any chunk that is going to move from that iterator to an empty. So for any chunk in this reverse iterator of file chunks, if we can find a chunk that fits into an empty space and is to the left of the start index in the uncompressed data of the empties or of the chunk, uh, then we can move it. So we push that into the moved chunks and we update some of the counts here. So our empties then that live in this vec are constantly getting updated if we move a chunk into one of those spaces, even though we keep the moved chunks in a different place. And then finally, we have to start our checksum. Uh, we do the base index and the sum starting with zeros. Again, we iterate over input.cars and enumerate. So we do quite a few iterations here. We do one up here, uh, one here, one here, and one here. So that's like four iterations over the total sequence. I was trying to find a way to do it in fewer, but I really couldn't come up with a good one. So to do the checksum, we get the number of indices from the value. Uh, we get the file ID from the compressed index from the enumerate that we were talking about before. We iterate over the range of the indices that this thing takes up. If it's a file and the chunk for the file ID that we're talking about hasn't been moved, it doesn't exist in that moved chunks array, then we add to the sum, we add to the base index and we continue. Now this is great for anything that hasn't been moved. For anything that has been moved, we just take that moved chunks vec and we just straightforwardly calculate sum index times file ID. And that gives us the sum. So that's it. I don't know how much of the part two video I'm actually going to put into the video. Uh, it took me a, a few hours tonight, but I will see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.